guys, I'm Madison Mir and welcome back to my channel. Today I have a brand new weekly reading vlog for you. So you're probably thinking, Madison, like what kind of an intro is this? Like this isn't normal at all. And yes, you are correct, it is not normal at all. You see, um, I lost the first three clips to this vlog and by lost, I mean I put them on my old hard drive, which I now have a new one. And I, I knew for the last couple of months that um, this hard drive was starting to get a little bit... We, we, it was beginning to die, okay? And um, I'd recently transferred a lot of my videos over to it because I was running out of space while filming that vlog because I had filmed a lot of B-roll, okay? And so I deleted the first couple of clips of that, plus like other stuff. And then when I went to go do this vlog, I couldn't get my old hard drive to work. Like it literally, it, it, it's dead, okay? And I only bought that hard drive back in 2018. So um, just a quick PSA, don't buy the Toshiba hard drives. Um, I recently have invested in a Seagate, which is wonderful. And I have other friends who use it and love it. So um, don't buy the Toshiba ones because they'll die on you within a year. Oh my God, why is the Roomba going? Roomba! I have to move so you guys can hear me now that the stupid Roomba is going and I don't have the controls to turn it off. My dad does. So that's great. Okay, let's go into my bedroom. It's still beautiful lighting in here. Don't worry about me. I'm just on my bed. Um, yeah, so... <sighs> the only footage I lost was the intro to this vlog and then my moving. So we left the Hamptons to move back to New York City. And so the only footage that you don't get is the moving part of this vlog, which is not like the worst. I did have some really nice B-roll footage while driving of this like really beautiful sunset. That's now gone forever. Well, it's on that hard drive, but that hard drive is dead, okay? I've tried for the last four days to try and get it to work. It's not happening, okay? It's, it's gone. It's deceased. Throw it at a funeral if you wanna, whatever. But um, yeah, basically, just want to let you guys know, for this vlog, I read two arcs that came out on October 13th. The first of which is The Golden Fury by Samantha Coho, and the second of which is Beyond the Ruby Veil vale by Mara Fitzgerald. That is all you need to know, and um, I hope you guys enjoy this vlog. We're going to go back in time to the day that I moved into this place, in which case you will notice that none of this stuff behind me was there. Instead, it was just a bunch of boxes, so let's get into it. Bye! Hey, okay, so we just finished moving all the stuff into the house and I'm about to just take off my makeup and go to bed, but I'm gonna give you guys a quick update, two things. Number one, I'm picking up my bookcases tomorrow to then build on Monday. Number two is that I get my tattoo tomorrow. It's my fifth tattoo, I'm so excited. I'm actually going for my mum because she's getting her first tattoo, which is really fun. So we'll see how it all goes, I'm super psyched. I've been waiting quite a few months for this. I booked it back in April. Yeah, back in April. I did start Golden Fury. I'm like, <laughs> oh actually I made a decent chunk. I did not even realize, wow. Oh, I'm like 80 pages in. Oh, I've had like a splitting headache, so it's just, I haven't been able to read as much as I wanted to. But um, it's interesting so far. Her mum has, did I explain what this is about? Yeah. Oh, I um, actually did not even tell you guys what this book is about. Now that I'm actually editing this video, I'm like, oh, that's, well, wow, smart. So this book is about a girl named Thea, Thea Hope, and she lives with her mum in France. Her mum is a very world-renowned alchemist because she's done a lot of great things with it, including um, creating this like magical armor. Thea has been training under her mum for years, and the two of them have been trying to achieve the ultimate alchemist goal, which is to create the Philosopher's Stone, which can turn any metal into gold and can cure any illnesses and things like that. So they've been trying to make it and they've gotten really close and just before they go to the final step, Thea's mom shut her out completely, which is when this book starts off. And then you end up finding out that her mom manages to almost make it and then she goes mad and just smashes the forming stone and just gets rid of all their work. And Thea manages to save some of the work and then she ends up taking the work with her to Oxford to see her dad. But she actually ends up figuring out through her mum's nose that there is actually a curse placed upon those who try and create the Philosopher's Stone if they are not worthy enough of it. And so that's kind of what the plot is about. Yes. Wonderful. 
Okay, first off, I thought this book was set in 1740s France, but like within the first 80 pages, she ends up moving to Oxford. That's interesting so far. I'm liking the idea of it, but obviously I'm only 80 pages in, so there's still a lot more development to go on, but I'm curious. She does have a former love interest, so we'll see if he actually ends up coming back into the picture. I'm quite curious. But you know, it's it's just pretty mediocre so far. I'm not like that enthralled by it. You know, we'll see. I have so many fairy loot boxes and Illumicrate boxes to open from the last couple of months. Oh, I do actually have something I can unbox while I'm here. Now that I think about it. Hang on. I have a package from Penguin. Um, the on sale date for this is... Oh crap, I don't know where to put you guys. The world's most flattering angle. We love it. Um, I don't have my tripod set up or anything at the moment, so this is what you guys are going to get. But, um, I do have a thing from Penguin. So, let's see. I think I'm, I'm like 80%, 90, 95% sure what this is going to be. Yes. Oh god. Kind of came a little bit messed up. But it is... Something happened to Ali Greenleaf. So this book does have a lot of triggers in it for sexual assault and rape. So I'm really excited to read this. Um, I'm a little bit, you know, wary to see if this is going to be like triggering at all to me. But I'm really excited because I just think that these can be just such amazing reads if they're done correctly and they can be very emotional. So I'm excited. Plus, like the cover's really awesome. So I'm very excited. But yes, that is all I wanted to update you guys on right now, and I'll catch you guys later. Bye! It is doing well. Oh, hello, baby. It's doing well. You know, just in case anyone was curious. So I do have three bookcases. I have three bellies. I'm going to build and put back here. I'm going to see how this goes. Could go 50-50. Oh, and also, um, I'm like, oh God. Like, I got far through the book last night. Um, I'm like two thirds of the way through it. And it's, it's still interesting, but I definitely think like something interesting needs to happen within this last third for it to be a four star. It's pretty average at the moment. For an alchemy book, I was really wanting more focus on like the science and stuff behind it than just her, you know, trying to warn people about the curse and people getting cursed and people dying and going mad and things like that. So I don't know, but uh, yeah, <sighs> let's see how this goes. No more reading has gotten done. My reading so far in October is uh, atrocious, but it's fine because I am making amazing 
progress. So currently I have my Sarah J Maas shelf uh, figured out and then I have all my K-pop stuff figured out up here and that that's kind of it. Everything else is in the works and I'm trying to figure things out. Actually these are books I'm using for specifically upcoming videos. So two shelves that are for sure done and then everything else is still being done. Okay, catch you guys up later. Bye bye! Hi, so I finished Golden Fury and the ending was pretty mediocre. I think that it started off really strong. It started off with a lot of potential, but those last like 100 or so pages that I just read just really fell flat. Um, the plot just really was struggling. I you know, didn't feel any of the shock factors. Oh shoot, I also want to quickly say there is a trigger warning in this for self-harm and attempted suicide. So that was a bit of a shock um, reading this. I don't know, I think this is like one of the most disappointing reads I've read this year just because I was hoping that this book would be great and it, it really fell flat for me. I did um, finish sitting at my bookcases. No. I'll give you guys like a full tour eventually, but just for now I've pretty much got it, you know, I got my mangas up top, all my books are set up, got some free spaces for when I get more books because that's just gonna happen. But yeah, I'm excited to start my next book, which is Beyond the Ruby Veil, vale, which also releases on October 13th. I'm just really hoping it's a lot better. Yeah, I'm really tired. I had a midterm tonight that I took. Uh, okay, that's all for now. I'm gonna go to sleep because I'm naked. Hi, so um, it is, what day is it, baby? Friday, it's Friday now. I haven't spoken to you guys in a couple days because of building this bookshelf. And then um, I was assigned midterm on Wednesday that I have in like 15 minutes to take. And then on Wednesday I also had a midterm that night. And then I also have two midterms that are due on Tuesday. So I have a lot going on at the moment, plus one of our assignments in one of my classes is kind of getting a little out of hand. And so I've been dealing with that today and it's just been really hard, you know, having to just go back and forth over email with professors to try and figure things out because you can't be in person to ask these questions. And so it's just, it gets really frustrating. So I've had a really frustrating day. I just, I took a nap <laughs> to kind of just clear myself of everything before this midterm tonight because I just, I did not want to sit here and just really be stressed out. So I'm feeling a bit better now, but it's still, you know, it, it kind of sucks. I'll update you guys when I've actually done more reading, but I hope this vlog doesn't become a mess because it started off really well. <laughs> okay, bye. Hey, so I took my midterm classes done. It's uh, 8.30 at night. So I'm just gonna have some dinner. I pre-made dinner throughout the week so that when I'm finished with class, because it's so late at night, I can just eat it then and heat it up. But I'm going to stop the Beyond the Ruby Veil tonight. That is my plan. But I also have an Amazon box that arrived. I have no idea what's in it because it's not for me. But I can see that there is a little note in it. And this could not have come at a better time because, as I said, I'm, I'm really stressed. And I've just been a bit off. Like, everything's fine, but, you know what I mean? Anyway, <laughs> I'm making no sense. Yeah, let's see. So I'm, I'm really happy. So ever sent me this, trust me, you're the best timing. I'm so thankful, and you're am Oh! <laughs> oh my god, someone sent me an early birthday gift. My birthday's next month. <laughs> happy early birthday. I've been a long-time subscriber of yours, and I absolutely love your videos. I saw your wish list and thought I'd share the love. You might remember me from Bookstagram. Let's get lost in books from Rifa. Thank you so much, Rifa. I'll definitely message you on Instagram and I'll leave their Bookstagram in the bio if you guys want to check them out. Oh, okay, so they sent me, very exciting. <gasps> okay, so they sent me Grown by Tiffany D. Jackson. I have just heard the most amazing things about this. Um, my friend Jay from JG, The Awkward Bookworm, is she's Canadian and she recently read the first chapter of this in a like um, read a chapter tag and 
she read it and explained the first chapter and I was like oh my god I need this now and then I've had other friends who read this and were just like this is freaking phenomenal and I was like oh my god I 100% need to get my hands on this so I'm super excited for this it's perfect and then I'm gonna message Katie after this she's gonna be so excited I got sent from blood and ash by Jennifer L Armand Trout this will be my first JLA book I read and I've only heard freaking phenomenal things on this so many of my friends that I trust have read this and loved it. And by so many friends, I mean Katie from Katie's Book Nook and um, Jess from Peace Love Books. Both read this and loved it. So pumped. Oh my god. Thank you so much. This is a perfect LA book. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Although now I have to... <laughs> I just fixed my shelves. <laughs> and now I don't want to put anything. Oh god. Okay. I'll work on this. We'll figure it out together. Thank you so much. Um, I should probably go back because my food is heating up on the stove and I should not have left it for four minutes alone, but that's what I did. <laughs> Jade from the Gender Reader is going to read, see this and be like, I cannot believe you did that again. She hates when I leave stuff on the stove. Okay, goodbye guys. Hey, so it's been, I don't even know what else I've played you guys. It's been a hectic week, like I said, with the midterms. I was up until 5 a.m. last night writing one of them and I'm home. <laughs> Still not done with it. I did another one today, so I'm, I'm kind of technically done, but not really, if you know what I mean. Um, wow, so there's only three minutes left of footage. I need to deal with that. But I did start on the movie the tonight, just a couple hours ago, and I'm currently actually halfway through. I didn't even realize I'm on chapter 11, 145 pages into it, and I'm freaking loving this. Our main character, Manuela, she is freaking badass. She is cutthroat, she is sexy, and this story is just really awesome. The guy character, Ale, he's a little bit of like, he's like a gawky soft boy, you know, he's like the typical reader type who's, you know, spends all his days in the library, doesn't really want to take over the family dukedom. But this is set in a world where Manuela, she is from a very prestigious family, and all her life she has been betrothed to the wealthiest family's son and the two of them are best friends they're both gay but the whole point of them marrying is the fact that he doesn't actually want to rule the dukedom and she does and she's very ambitious and he's rich is what she says and so the two of them are basically the perfect pair in this world their town lives in the middle of this vale and they're the only town that's there and the only way that they get water is from this being called the water cree and there are people and they get omens and it's like a little kind of red bruise that appears on their body and when a person gets this omen they have to sacrifice themselves to the water crease tower and be drained of their blood and their blood is then used to create water for the town and Amanduela has actually had her little bruise her omen for seven years now and that's very unheard of and she's kept it secret because normally a person once they get their omen it ends up taking over their whole body within a couple hours and they just crumble into dust but she's not like that and everything seems fine until it's her wedding day and the water crew finally sees her for the first time and realizes that she has her omen and so she ends up being taken by the water crew and Emmanuel is not okay with this she's like I'm not going this way and so she ends up actually killing the water crew and because now her town has no sources of water and she has to find a way to do this because everyone wants to kill her for what she's done but they're also you know dehydrating to death so it's really interesting it's taken a totally different turn than I thought it was going to go with this and I'm really interested to see how this is going to keep going but like I said I have one minute left of this footage clip so I just took out some clips so now I can just sit here and actually talk a little bit more about this book so yeah Amanuela she's really awesome because she has been built to you know her dad's kind of always taught her to have this ambition that she can become the best it's so funny because like she'll wear she makes her own dresses and she loves to wear them with like plunging neckline and like really long slits in the dresses and everyone else thinks it's just completely like atrocious but she loves it and other women like try to be her and she also like does her hair up in like these really like elaborate like braids and things like that and other women always try to copy that too and she even says at one stage she's like yeah and then like I bring a little comb like a bejeweled comb with me to every party I go to and sometimes I give it out to girls when they have like their nice hairstyles if they if they get really close to how I've done it before because I want to keep them on their toes and so like they keep trying and it's just hilarious and you know she's always a she's a very fast thinker and she's very self-sufficient and her first thought is always 
you know, for herself and how she can look after herself. And the only person she really has a connection with is Ale, who is, you know, the guy she's betrothed to and her best friend and her nanny. Her nanny is so wonderful and sweet, who I, I absolutely love her. But I would say if you guys enjoy Alessandra from The Shutters Between Us by Trisha Levenseller, you will love this because they're both very similar. Although Emanuela is hella gay in this. Although we haven't really seen too much of it yet, but I think we're about to. And I think I know who we're going to have like her sapphic romance with. Um, and I think I know who Ailes, um like, gay romance is going to be between. So I'm very interested to see. They're such like conflicting people and it's really interesting to see. We don't see a male like kind of side character to the female who's so... How do I put this? He's so subservient to her. And he tends to follow whatever she says, unless it's, you know, to save her from something. And then he kind of acts out and will do something. But it's just, it's such a fun relationship to see. And, you know, I don't want to spoil anything that happens in this book, because a lot of things tend to happen after, like, her killing the water Cree that aren't in the synopsis of the book. And I think it's more fun to kind of go into it without knowing. I'm very invested in this, so... I don't know when this vlog is coming out, but so far, this has been a really great book, and I do suggest that you guys look into buying it, because it will be out by the time this vlog comes out. And hopefully this is a five-star book, because Golden Fury was not great, and this really does have the potential to be, like, <laughs> delicious. So, we shall see. Zelda is currently playing with... A, uh, what do you call them? Like the ear thingies that go on the ears to block the noise? Earbuds. Earbuds. Those. It's like, it's about to come out from underneath there. It's a... <laughs> Hang on. Do you guys see? She's playing with it and then watch she, she knocks it through. And then she's gonna be like, wait, why can't I get it? And then she comes around the other side and then she keeps playing with it. And then it'll go back under and she just keeps going back and forth with it. I love you, you're so funny. Like who doesn't who doesn't watch my channel sometimes just for this prime cat content? I think that's the real question. If you're not here for Zelda, who are you here for? Okie dokie, bye. So I got up to go turn off the light and I realized that she <laughs> literally and look what she did. I don't even know how she got herself like into it like that. <laughs> it's the cutest thing I've ever seen. Oh my god, I love you. Hey, so it's the next day. Um, I was going to after you guys last night, but I was so tired that I was like, mm, I'm just gonna go to bed. I did finish Beyond the Ruby Veil last night. It was amazing. I was, I think it was like one in the morning and I was like, oh, you know, I'll just read a couple pages. You know, we'll get through like two or three chapters and then I'll go to bed, you know? And I finished the whole book. So I finished this book in two sittings. It was amazing. It is, I, I, oh my God, like it's such an easy five star. Like I can't imagine it being anything less than that, honestly. And I can't believe I have to wait a whole nother year to get the sequel to it because it leaves off on an amazing cliffhanger. So I know I already explained to you guys what this book is about, but it's so cool because she really is, Manuela, our main character, she is so bloodthirsty and power hungry and just kick ass. Like, she is very self serving and she does want to do what's best for her, you know, town, but she also wants to do what's best for her. She wants to do what will give her the most power and what will make her the most powerful. And she wants people to fear her, she wants people to respect her, and she wants to be the person who has to just rely on herself to do everything. And you know, with the way that the magic in this works is it's it's blood magic. You know, I think I mentioned, you know, the blood of the people are then are used by the water Cree to create water. And it is, you know, expanded upon. And there is eye horror in this for people who don't like that. I know a lot of people out there don't like eye horror. So do be aware of that. Um, I did not see it coming and I really liked it as a touch. It definitely is a very brutal magic system and our characters in this are very brutal. You know, there are a lot of punches that are pulled 
and a lot of the characters are very self-serving and they don't care who they hurt in the process and so the choices that they make are not necessarily good. You know, I wouldn't even say our characters are morally grey. So while a lot of our characters are queer and gay, it's not a romance at all in this. There's definitely an inkling of a romance between Manuela and this other female, but it's not anything that is you know, looked into. It's definitely a foundation that I think we will see built upon in the next book. I loved it so much. I literally, I finished it and I immediately put it on my wish list. I was like, I need to own this book. Like, I have it as an arc, but I need to own it because, oh my god. And now that I have read the book and I looked at the book's cover, the book's cover is so smart. I can't even get over it. It's, it's just so interesting the way that this, oh. uh, there's so much I could say, but because the synopsis doesn't give anything away, I don't want to, you know, spoil anything because it's really interesting going in only knowing what the synopsis says because there's a lot, a lot more to this book than what you expect and it is honestly a wild ride. If you guys did enjoy this reading vlog, there's a lot that happened in it, you know, from moving to tattoos to all my midterms to just craziness. So I hope you guys enjoy this and I had a lot of fun filming it. I do want to let you guys know I've gotten two of my midterm grades back and I got A's in them both. So I got just two more left. Um, and yeah, so if you guys enjoyed this vlog, if you guys did, please hit the like button down below if you want to see more of me. Please go to my channel and until next time, thanks so much guys. Bye!